Our first California female architect is Hazel Emma Wood Waterman, and she was born May 5, 1865, in Tuskegee, Alabama. However, both she and her father, Reverend Jesse Wood, moved to Oroville, about 152 miles northeast of San Francisco, in the early 1880s, and Hazel attended UC Berkeley during the years 1882 through 1883. She was an art student. While attending Berkeley, Hazel met Waldo Sprague Waterman, son of Robert Waterman, the California governor, and they married April 11, 1889. The Watermans moved to Cayamaca in eastern San Diego County, about 157 miles southeast of Los Angeles, where Waldo was a supervisor for the Stonewall Mine owned by his father. While in Cayamaca, Hazel had her first child, and she eventually became the mother of three, Robert Wood, Helen Gardner, and Waldo Dean. The family moved to San Diego in 1891, where Hazel's husband became employed by a railroad company. Hazel's husband died February 24, 1903, at the age of 43, and she enrolled in an architectural drafting correspondence course. About 1905, Hazel Waterman began her employment with Hubbard & Gill, design firm for the Waterman San Diego home called the Granite Cottage. Irving Gill was the home's actual designer, though Hazel planned many details, including the window frames. Hans Gill was able to see what Hazel could do, and this is why he affirmed that she had a natural architectural talent. In fact, Hazel wrote about the experience of designing her home in a 1902 issue of House Beautiful magazine. An image of the cottage now follows. At Hubbard and Gill, Hazel received invaluable on-the-job training and was soon allowed to design the Alice Lee home in 1905. Yet Irving Gill was the architect of record since Hazel was just beginning. The following shows a photo of how the Alice Lee home appeared in 2016. However, Hazel was indeed a quick study and still kept close ties with Gill during most of her career. Yet she also received some knowledge and influence from Kate Sessions, a landscape designer, and Julius Wangenheim, a local businessman. Hazel started her own architectural practice as she designed many homes and gardens around the San Diego area. She used the arts and crafts American craftsman style and was partial to blending indoors and outdoors in her designs. In 1911, she designed her first non-residential building, the Wednesday Club of San Diego, of which she was a member. She included Spanish architecture elements in the resulting design shown in the next photo. The following photo gives an example of the American arts and crafts style which began in England. Nevertheless, Hazel Waterman's most noteworthy commission was in 1910 from wealthy transportation and real estate businessman John D. Spreckles. Hazel was asked to restore the Estudillo House in Old Town, San Diego, and this structure had been erroneously associated with Helen Hunt Jackson's 1884 popular book, Ramona. The home's adobe building was originally constructed in 1827 by Jose Maria Estudillo and son, Jose Antonio Estudillo, and the dwelling was considered one of the finest in Mexican California. However, by 1884, the home had become associated in the public's mind with the marriage of Ramona and Jackson's book. There was actually no connection, but the owner played on the perception by selling off pieces of the building as souvenirs. Of course, this caused the home to quickly fall into disrepair. In fact, Waterman's description was that it was a pathetic ruin. Waterman took great pains to learn about the architecture of the home's time period and restored it on its original footprint. The home is over 113 feet long and has two adjoining wings. In fact, Waterman hired only Mexican workers who were experienced with the construction methods originally used. This meant that they mixed stable straw, seaweed, broken shells, and soft clay, 
and they kneaded and packed the dough-like substance into wooden molds. The molds were set on their sides to dry in the sun for not less than 30 days, turning at least twice to prevent cracking. Hazel Waterman further indicated, It seemed to me that the Estudillo House should be restored as a typical aristocratic building of Spanish and Mexican California, representing those days when it had served no mean purpose, a relic of that unique California civilization nowhere else to be found and almost forgotten. Waterman also designed the landscape for the home 75 feet by 75 foot courtyard and used a romantic Mediterranean style. The restoration was indeed successfully completed, but Spreckles leased the property to a, a minstrel performer, Tommy Getz, who had no experience in museum management. In fact, he actually promoted the idea that the building was Ramona's marriage place and did not even indicate that it was Casa de Estudio. Getz sent postcards throughout the United States that he showed the property with mission bells, a courtyard fountain, and a garden of shrubs and fruit trees. There was also a wishing well, and this had the inscription, Quaff ye the waters of Ramona's well. Good luck they bring and secrets tell. Blessed were they be sandaled friar. So drink and wish, for they desire. Waterman was absolutely dismayed by the lack of historical accuracy. Furthermore, in 1924, when Getz bought the property, he started converting some of the architecture and further promoted the Ramona myth and downplayed the Estudio history. Yet even before the 1920s, Hollywood had produced a movie, Ramona, starring Mary Pickford, and this was the first of five eventual films. All the movies promoted the Ramona connection to the house. However, matters have now changed by 2016 and all of the Ramona paraphernalia have been removed. In addition, the Casa de Estudio is interpreted as a historic California home by California State Parks. In 1970, it was placed on the National Registry of Historic Places as it represents probably the finest extant example in the United States of a typical large Spanish-Mexican one-story townhouse. Hence, the work of Hazel Waterman has been validated, and you can see how the Casa de Estudio looks by means of the following photos. There were limited photos of Hazel Waterman. I could only find one that was free to use. Hazel Waterman continued to practice as an architect through 1929, and she died in Berkeley, California on January 22, 1948 where she retired. Some of the other important works of her career included number one, San Diego Children's Home in Balboa Park, and two, Wangenheim Gardens, earned a 1933 Certificate of Honor by the American Institute of Architects. Unfortunately, since Hazel Waterman worked for and was strongly influenced by Irving Gill, the association of her name with any architectural works has sometimes been lost. Mm -hmm.